Hey, uh, so I got a couple comments on my last video asking me to make uh, tutorials on, like, tutorials and one about ships, like two comments. So I guess that's a worthwhile thing to do. So just to get started, we'll place down a starter block. Uh, you want to make sure it's like up in the air and kind of this blue color, because if it's green, uh, that'll make a like a ground structure, kind of like the, I'm um, not viewing distance of it, but kind of like the starting area. So if you want to make a ship, you want it up here. And that's the first thing you do. And then you can place blocks on it. And uh, at this point, after you've placed like your first block or so, you can erase it. But uh, if you're building down on the ground, you might want to keep it around just because having this block uh, makes it so that your structure floats. Otherwise, if you erase it, it just kind of falls like this. Um, so I'll just start a new one. Uh, okay, so yeah, you basically want any shape. I've laid out the basic um, build the basic block shapes onto my toolbar from the codex, uh, which you open with tab if you didn't know, and yeah, you can just kind of you drag them uh, onto there. Oh, I want to. Yeah, and dragging replaces whatever's there. Um, just that a basic thing to know if you didn't already. Uh, okay, so you can you place it and like placing a block. You I'm holding down the button first, and um, currently my um, s like rotation keys are set to Q and E. I think the default currently is like R and Shift R. It, you know, both will work depending on what your key bindings are set to. So um, as I'm, uh, well, you can just like drag uh, to like move things on a certain axis. And then if you hit whatever rotation key, it'll change. Uh, I think it highlights. Yeah, I think the these up and down might be highlighted. Uh, the arrows, if you can see that. Although it's not very obvious in this lighting, but I think it it kind of shows. And so yeah, switching between switching the rotation things will switch between which axis axes are um, the dragging will work with. Although, it, let's see, I think, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a thing you intuit after a while rather than doing consciously sometimes. Also, I think the way I placed it, I can't, oh wait, yeah, no, I can drag it up. Okay. So anyway, let's just make a line like this and then um, I think first thing I want to do actually is grab a seat. Uh, like, let's see, I think this, 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 and this will all work as seats. You can just, you know, press F to sit on them. Uh, but I'm going to grab one of these. And, okay, you can see, rotate it as you need. I'll play it place that down and then I think I will use one of the bricks. Uh, bricks are the smaller version of blocks um, and they, they kind of currently work differently from blocks like they don't provide heat or or as as far as like their mass doesn't um, dissipate heat and they don't provide um, uh, HP bonuses. If, I'll, if I hit tab, I can click here to look at the ship currently. Um, I don't know if it... Yeah, well, okay, yeah, hull points are, as far as I know, they're only based off of what blocks you've placed. Like, bricks don't factor into it, um, just currently. That, that might change in the future. Uh, so now I have a chair, and I think I'm going to Oh, yeah, blocks. Uh, get a yoke. And 
put it like that. And then... Yeah, that's probably enough room for that. I'll just put down a spaceship computer, and then I'll go to my link tool and link this up to the, uh, yeah, the computer. And as you can see down there, uh, there's no power. Okay, yeah, no power. So yeah, the first thing we'll need is to put down a reactor, and we have a reactor block right here that that'll probably do for this size of ship, but if we need to, we can add more. You can also stretch these blocks out um, if need be. Uh, I don't think it really matters, but I'm not sure if it matters whether or not like the, all of the reactor blocks are part of the same like stretched bit or not, but um, anyway. Now we have power, and then uh, the next thing we'll need for a functional spaceship is some sort of thruster. You can use uh, these, uh, oh, I'm not getting a tooltip thing, uh, if I, why am I not getting, okay, I'm not sure why I don't, there's no description showing, but uh, these are thruster blocks, um, and like these are the big block thrusters that these ones provide not only thrusting but like propulsion but also they allow you to go to light speed. Uh, these other ones are bricks, brick based but they can be stretched up to about the size of blocks. They just uh, will like they'll be restricted to the maximum size that bricks have for size and they also their heat balance is a little different um, but anyway uh, so these kind will only do um, well they will allow light speed they'll also they'll only allow you to move backward and forward whereas uh, these ones can allow you to move side to side and up and down if they're placed um, like on the either on the top and bottom or on the sides for um, maneuvering and you can also place these on the back of a ship to provide forward propulsion so that's good to know um, so yeah you can this might even be too big for this size of a ship uh, but yeah it's that'll be pretty maneuverable then you could also just place them like this or, you know, something in between, but I felt like making them that big. And you can also put them in the back to provide thrust. The little brick, the brick based uh, thrusters provide more thrust per power, I believe, than uh, this kind, but they uh, use up a lot more heat. That's why I'm going to get rid of them. Unless I uh, dissipate some of the heat by using more blocks. So I can stretch out like one of these. Uh, I might have, let's see, do I have, I might put the mirror tool on. Uh, I'll do. So you put it on like, it'll be on like one axis. You can also rotate it like this, uh, uh, oh yeah, and you can rotate it like this. Uh, currently you can only have like one, um, one of these uh, mirrors up at a time. So anyway, uh, with this mirror thing in place, it'll do the, a reflection of what I'm doing on the other side. The only, um, the only, like exception to that is if uh, you have something like uh, a, yeah, a mechanism uh, like a, a rail um, or a no, it's not even, I don't know what's going on with tooltips like one of these rails or one of these rotors or one of the hinges and you can see the they have S for if they're um, 
the small size and uh, the rails have uh, both regular rails and add-ons which just allow you to extend the size of a rail like if you place a rail down uh, it'll extend it anyway so the thing about uh, all of these mechanisms is that they create what is called child entities so if I put one of these down so you see it uh, it mirrors the the hinge here but if I start placing a block onto here uh, it is not currently mirrored because uh, currently the mirror tool doesn't w support the child entities. Uh, it probably should, probably will in the future. It's just that's currently not supported yet. Um, but yeah, you can just place it like that uh, to kind of get what you need. Uh, so anyway, and I guess since I have a a thing like that now. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes. I don't know if I really need that. I might as well show what happens with that so you can uh, connect or how to use child entities basically. So you want to connect a sequencer, sequencer gate. Okay, it's showing it on the tooltip properly. Uh, and you'll connect it up using the link tool and then. Uh, It'll want to, all right, that works. You want some sort of, probably a switch that that's probably the best. Otherwise, I think, well, you could use a button, but that would probably only just make it do the thing once. So anyway, to make the sequence, make the uh, these work properly, you want to go into the sequencer that's hooked up to it and put in some sort of value between uh, 0 degrees and 180 degrees, so I'll go with 90, actually, yeah, for an off state, and, uh, okay, we'll, we'll do 180 here, uh, and then I guess I'll do the same here, it might be, oop, uh, it might be, it might need to be changed or something since it's mirrored, so it might not be the same value, so anyway, uh, when I do that, uh, that goes down, and then when I put, yeah, when it's the off position, it goes down to 180, and then when it, or I'm sorry, when it's in the on position, it goes down to 180, and it's off, it goes back to 90. And let's see, so this, oh, I don't think I linked this one. Nope. Okay, so, okay, that one goes 180 and on, and 90 and off, so I could technically probably just um, get, oh, uh, okay, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, okay, so you can turn off the mirror tool with the M key. See, uh, it's red now, that indicates that it's off, so then you can just place one thing at a time. Uh, oh, uh, I think I accidentally put that into the reactor. You can turn off reactors and also thrusters, uh, which can be useful. I don't know about reactors turning off. I don't know what the point of that is, but like uh, for thrusters, you can turn them off so they don't use up power or use heat. And I guess turning off reactors would stop them creating heat. So in certain cases, that's useful. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna just quickly put 90, 180 here and hook this up and since that was hooked up okay yeah so now yeah as you can see you can use the same sequencer for two different things so long as they do the same thing uh, okay that's kind of pointless but yeah all right so so far we have um, I think we have basically a usable ship, uh, since the the control is hooked in there. Yeah, and then we can go up, down, side to side, and you can, if you can see, uh, the movement follows your mouse. So if you have it centered, you won't move, but if you move any other way, it'll 
go that way, and then you use the W, A, S, and D key to go forward. Uh, this ship is not all that fast. Uh, they have a lot faster ships. But that's because it only has like one thruster block. But Oh, and I can also go uh, hit shift to go into boost mode, which will make me go a lot faster. And then shift again, go back to maneuvering. And since we do ha technically have a light speed, you can hit L to go into light speed. You wait till it charges up, and then hit L again, and you go out of light speed. Uh, which is pretty simple. Uh, how far? Wait, was that? Oh no, the ring is down there. Okay, let's head back there. Oh, oh I didn't wait all the way. Okay, now it's fully light speed, or light, light cruise, I guess. It's, I don't know. There, I don't know if there will be a faster one or whatever. Cruise kind of implies, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you know what, this is good enough. Uh, let's wait for it to slow down before I get out. Um, okay, uh, I think we're good. Okay, hit, oh, and you have to hit F to get in and out, and uh, get out of the, both the yoke and get out of the seat. Is that, okay, it's still moving a little bit, but not that much. Uh, okay, so what else do I want to do with this as far as a basic ship? Um, oh, I do want to show off how weapons work. So I have a laser cannon here. Uh, okay, that might be a bit much to do full unless I, I'd probably have to get more power. And then, uh, so we have two laser cannons set up there. And then, uh, oh, you can switch between the different toolbars uh, by hitting this by using the scroll wheel while holding down shift, that will take you to uh, different, different. Um, you have the three different uh, hotkey bars. So I am right now. I'm going to use this hotkey gate, and I am going to hook it up to both of our weapons here, and then I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I believe I have the yoke activated and hooking the yoke into the hotkey gate and then I'm gonna, and then I'm going to uh, set it to fire primary. So with all that set up, the yoke into the hotkey gate and the hotkey gate going into the weapons, I should now be able to go in and yep, I can fire off the weapons with the hotkey, uh, which is uh, fire primary, which is should be your left mouse button, I believe. Uh, yeah, so that is working, although the power is not great. We can't really get sustained fire from that, um, so we might want to replace this power with a larger power uh, array or whatever. Alright, so let's see, how does that look now? Okay, yeah, now we have stable power. And then, uh, so with that in place, uh, let's see, if I take a, where is it? Oh, there's a Gatling barrel. Oh, and so you can see there are the weapons have both uh, large and small sizes, just like the bricks. Like these are the brick versions of weapons, and uh, you need to use uh, bricks with bricks and uh, blocks with blocks for both um, weapon parts. And you have the barrels, or like the yeah these. Uh, no. Okay, so this to here, 
uh, is all of the barrel add-ons, like you attach them to the end of a weapon, and uh, from here to here is the add-ons, which are attached to the side of a weapon. And you can only attach uh, barrel add-ons to the laser weapon. I believe that's it. This, yeah, the tooltip is not working for this currently. I might have to log that in the bug report. In a bug report. Um, and I believe this is the beam weapon, which uh, does not allow uh, these barrel add-ons, but it can go longer than the laser weapon, so you have the room for more of the side add-ons. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's how weapons work. So I'm going to put on... Actually, oh, well... Oh, they're child entities anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to put these... I don't think I want them that long. These Gatling... Uh, laser, these Gatling barrels on, which will increase the fire rate. And then, uh, I believe this is the yeah overheat add-on, which increases um, the heat, but allows you to do heat damage... Uh, and then, yeah, okay, we really need, I really need to, I'm sure once I log it, Asuna will fix what's, fix this tool tip thing pretty quickly, because, yeah, that's, it's not great for figuring stuff out. Um, so anyway, so all I had to do, since the weapons are hooked up, is just put these onto the weapon and they should do their job and now uh as you can see yeah it's firing a lot faster huh okay i thought it would give more heat but maybe i need to uh, maybe i need to make them longer okay because i thought that would show how much heat is affected but Let's just make it as long as we can. All right. Wow, okay. Yeah, okay. I guess that is... Ah, okay. Oh, no. Wait, is that... No, I thought there was some recoil going on. All right. Let's just make this as long as we can. Okay, and then we'll have to hook these back up again. Because I erased them. Just currently can't um, stretch things out after you've built them, so you just kind of have to remake them. Okay, let's see what this does. And then... This is probably going to do something with this much. Oh, especially if I add this. Okay. Uh, we'll see if this even fires. Okay. Well, probably will fire, but okay. But yeah, you can see uh, below the energy, the heat really... Oh, okay, we need power. The heat really builds up with this. Or, well, actually, it doesn't build up that much. More running out of power than heat at this point. So let's just add in some more power. I guess oh, I can also, well, not with the, yeah, because the logic is, otherwise I could stretch it up all the way. So, yeah. And there we go. Okay. It's still actually okay for heat. But let's see what happens when we have all this going. Okay, now we're just having heat build up, since we have stable power. Um, and, you know, you can just leave it like that um, if you want. I mean, once we get to about this much, I think it the heat build up slows it down. Um, but, like, if you have high heat, that makes it more likely that if you get hit by some other ship, it'll be more likely it'll cause your ship to overheat. 
So that's kind of a thing to keep in mind, even if you have less than like 100% heat. Uh, as if you can see in the bottom right corner, there's a, a thing that shows your heat percentage and your energy percentage. And you want those values as low as you can get them. I mean, you don't have to make them super low, but uh, like, you know, keep them down as much as you can. So I think I might also at this point add in uh, thruster to increase speed. Uh, to, okay, for some reason, I don't know, maybe these fins are helping keep the heat down. Uh, and I also wanted to, uh, while we're at it, um, make a hotkey that will, let's see, take it from the yoke, and then I believe I can just hook it to that switch. Yeah. So, and I think by default it's set to 1, so that should work. So if I hit that, yep, that will cause the barrels there to rotate since we already set those up um, so you can see if I go F4 to get to uh, third person mode they rotate underneath oh and apparently when they do that they are clipping together which doesn't cause problems currently but uh, in the future like clipping like that won't be allowed so it's a thing to avoid for uh, builds just because it'll it'll get patched sometime in the future uh, I'm gonna do tab to do free look you can see how those um, overheat add-ons right here in the middle just kind of closed in together yeah yeah that won't exist forever but currently you can just do that sort of thing but yeah not recommended to do it just for future proofing okay so I think let's see oh uh, besides like uh, various other things I think at this point I want to put in uh, oh, and I'm gonna put mirror mode back on put in some shields because uh, this ship currently does not have them. So I'm going to go back into first person. Oh, uh, oh wait, that's not shields. That is small power blocks. This is shields. They look similar, so I sometimes confuse them. Uh, so I'm going to put some shields up. How much power? Oh, that takes... Yeah, I think that... How much power did this... Yeah, we went from 21% to 81%. Wow, so 60% of our power went to shields now. How does that affect the uh, performance of guns? Okay, yeah. Uh, if we want to keep those shields, we might want a little bit more power. So, or we could cut down on shields. Uh, either way, but... I think it's nice to have shields. Oh, I'm getting an error just because symmetry doesn't like it when you put a block that overlaps itself, but it doesn't really cause problems. It's just like telling you that it's not going to do any mirror mode. It just places the block regular. Uh, so let's see, how does that work? How is this working now? Okay, right now we're just increasing heat which is you know not the best but not the worst might put down uh, a few more blocks like since this is just kind of a demonstration I'm not gonna make it look really pretty but okay and yeah let's see since it only rotates under yeah we could just put it like that and it won't affect anything yeah, it doesn't look good, but it functions, and that's the important part. So, since I'm going after function right now, I figure I might uh, do one of the more basic functions and uh, put in 
landing gear. I could just use this as landing gear, but eh, you know that's not that's not great. But although you know what, I mean it does go under and such. So yeah, for a basic tutorial on stuff, it's not great. But okay. Uh. Yeah. So I guess. All right. Or should we use? Maybe I'll just use. Yeah. Uh. A brick based one. So. Uh. I'm gonna. Oh wait. Yeah. It's mirrored. I don't know if that matters. Well, actually, I'm gonna turn off mirroring. So, to make a a uh, landing gear, uh, you can use any of the mechanisms, um, and you'll just want to, like, you could basically consider these fold-down things as landing gear, and um, you can use a hotkey gate. Uh, Technically, we could use this, but like, uh, yeah, in fact, if we're doing that, we could just do this uh, and set this to landing gear. And like the way this is worked, like this works, is that um, when you press G, the way, since it's set to landing gear, this will fold down at just like it did before, um, but right the way it is now it's considered landing gear and uh, so if you press G you'll see the, the little thing down here uh, yeah the little marker down here says landing gear on and off and yeah when you press G it folds it up and down and yeah landing gear is whatever you designate under the hotkey as landing gear because that's how the hotkeys work it's it's so it doesn't really matter um so anyway so, but yeah you can use whatever you want like rails uh hinges or um rotors and you can use those for landing gear whatever you want. Uh, I might uh, do a second tutorial because it's getting a bit long here. I might do another one about how to do like a proper several sequence landing gear. Um, but yeah, just for purposes now, you can have very simple landing gear by um, uh, setting it up like, let's see, and I'm gonna. Okay. Yeah, setting it up to do whatever with the hotkey, and that's landing gear. So, and then we can have front landing gear with this, because I believe, let's see, uh, I think I'll want, since this switch controls landing gear currently, I'm gonna uh, put this one into this sequencer and attach the sequencer to this rail and have the rail oh oh you can uh, on any hinge or whatever a rail you can just hit f to cycle them through and technically like you could just hook a uh a switch up to a landing uh, like up to straight up to this rail or whatever and it would go to like its most extreme values and switch between them but um I'm gonna use a sequencer because it's kind of best practices. Uh, I don't remember. So you with the rails, you s the baseline is zero, and then the re the other end is like the maximum of whatever this thing in meters is. So uh, I think it's currently in off position. So for its on position, I want 0.75, which is this. So let's see. Will that do. Okay, I think I might want it the opposite way. And also, technically, I would want this further forward so it doesn't clip into that, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so yeah, uh, the way this is going, yeah, I think I want to reverse the um, 
values here. So zero to five. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, I think the since I cycled it through, I think it's going to work properly now. Okay. Yep. There we go. Again, clipping, but yeah, we'll, we're not going to worry about that right now. So that would put the thing into the landing position, and you'd probably want like a more sophisticated setup for that, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to go through that whole thing right now. You, the point is you can make a basic workable landing gear with just one animation of like a rotor or a, a rail. Or wait, no, that's a hinge. Oh, or a rotor. Rotors are more difficult because they don't really... Like, if we get a rotor... Uh, if I put it down, you can't really tell which... Or, yeah, I don't think you can really tell which direction it is. And that's why rotors... I think that's kind of why rotors are kind of difficult to work with. Because you have to put down blocks to figure out which way they're going. But... Uh, anyway, um, but they're useful in some situations, which is why I use them sometimes. Alright, so now uh, I think the last thing I'll go through is painting. Uh, so you can just kind of decorate like this, uh, or use, you know, um, you know, you've also got like these metallic colors or whatever um, and so it'll cl color it a block at a time even if it's like all a connected block and if you hit one of these oh I guess yeah when you hit one of the like power or whatever it'll do all of them but yeah with the whole blocks it's one at a time but yeah you can play around with coloring and whatever and if you uh, like hit the right mouse button, it'll revert it to its normal state. Uh, so that that's that's how colors work. And then decals um, are you can kind of stretch them out on a surface, and then you can also uh, uh, you can also color them like the individual ones, and you can also layer them uh, like that, and then color those individual ones, and then you can uh, get rid of them with the like right mouse button, which is basically it'll affect the right mouse button, uh, will get rid of whatever it is in whatever like context it is like decals if you have a decal selected it'll get rid of decals if you have paint selected it gets rid of paint if you have a block selected it gets rid of blocks that's how erasing works with these um but yeah i think that is basically the basics of building a ship uh there you know i can get more into like animating um, things and like logic but I, as a basic tutorial on how to build a ship I think uh, I think I pretty much covered it and then there's various other things like cameras uh, and teleport pads and stuff that aren't really part of the ship but like can help with it um, and also might go into turrets in a future thing but that's I mean this video has gotten a bit long and then you've also got various decorative elements but yeah I think this for now is a pretty good uh, idea of how shipbuilding works so hopefully you found that helpful uh, I'll probably try to get I, I don't know no promises but I'm, I might try to get a logic thing up eventually uh, probably be better to just link a tutorial on logic that's not a video tutorial but anyway uh, it's a pretty good one that will be helpful and I'll probably put that in like the description anyway but for now uh, like hope you enjoyed this hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time